Hi family, how are we doing? So I just thought I would come on here to just have a quick conversation with us. I really hope that you're having a great day so far. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Wherever in the world you are, I really hope that you're having a good weather. One that you like, one that you prefer. Amen. So I got to talk about this. This is really important. And I probably will ask a question to get things started. Why are we not reading the word for ourselves? What has the word of God done to us? What has the Bible done to us while we're not going into it to search it? Why are we not searching the scripture? Why are we disengaged when it comes to the scripture? Too often I'm seeing where people are stepping forward for healing and deliverance. But when it comes to hearing the word, nobody wants to hear the word. How do we expect to survive as spiritual beings living in a body, earthly body, earthen vessel? If we do not have the spiritual medicine, which is the word of God to sustain us. You know, I find that in many instances, even when it comes on to the context of worshiping in the sanctuary, here's what the enemy does. The enemy will have the people up and running, alive and are very much engaged once they're doing announcements, once it's time for, you know, offering collection and people are vibrant during that time, are participating. If there's a dance ministry doing something, yes, they'll watch and they'll clap and they'll shout hallelujah. And you know what? Oftentimes, the moment it's time for the word, people start sleeping. The thing that carries the most weight during a church service to show you how religious we have become. The most important part of a church service is where we sleep it out. Is it that we're not being taught the relevance and importance of the word of God in our lives? How are we going to know how to pray if we don't know the word? How are we going to know how to do warfare if we don't know the word? How are we going to be equipped to combat the tactics of the enemy if we do not have the word inside? Now, something that has really puzzled me, you know, over the years during my time of doing ministry by God's grace is this. Because see, I was taught that you cannot be a Christian, a born-again believer who has committed his ways unto God. A, a Christian, someone who is saved, cannot be possessed by demonic spirits but can be oppressed. So whereas the person in the world can be possessed internally by demonic spirits, the child of God can only be plagued by that spirit from an external perspective or point of view. So the spirits cannot live inside because the Holy Ghost already dwells inside. And of course, you know, the two kingdoms cannot coexist in the same place or space. Right? But I've oftentimes seen where children of God or Christians, may I say, I've seen Christians possessed and I just could not understand. But how is it that I'm taught this? And I do believe this for real because if the Holy Ghost is inside, there's no way another entity can begin to live in that same place. And I used to wonder like, but the truth is, if I were to be honest, I have seen Christians possessed. How is it that the child of God can be possessed? It just doesn't make any sense. And this is something I've been trying to figure out, but it's, it's like an internal conversation that I've been having with the Holy Spirit. And then the answer has finally come. I hear the word waterless. Waterless. The Spirit of the Lord says many of us have become waterless. Waterless. Why? The word of God, hallelujah, is the water. And where there is the absence of the word, 
which is the absence of water, that space will become dry. And watch this magnificent connection that the Holy Ghost has given to me. When we become dry because we do not have the word, because we have no time to read it, we don't regard it, we just want people to pray for us and pray with us, but we don't want to delve into scripture and feed our spirit man. When we become dry, glory to the living God, you know what that means? It means that we would have now met the requirement for demonic possession. Now, let us just remind ourselves quickly of what the Bible says according to Matthew 12, verse 43. It says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through waterless places seeking rest. Hallelujah. And find none. He's looking for what? Places that are without water, dry places. He's looking for places that are what? Waterless. And what did we say the water is? The water is the word of God. That's why the scripture says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You're talking about the word scriptures. Hallelujah. Spilling out from your belly, from your womb, your spiritual womb. If you have no water, you become dry. And if you are dry, guess what's going to happen? Demons are going to see you as a suitable place to live. Now, the Bible says the gift and calling of God are without repentance. In other words, God does not take back his gifts. Sure enough, he does not take back his gifts when he gives them to us. But let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost is not going to dwell in a body that is unholy. He's not going to remain in a body that is continually going into a state of backsliding. He's not going to remain into a body that is not feeding him with his word. If you are not connecting with the word in your body, through your spirit, man, the Holy Ghost ain't going to remain there. What, what will be his purpose of just being in a body that is useless? Because remember, it's the word that equips us to fight. It's our main weapon for war. It's the sword. Now you go on that battlefield without a sword. You know what's going to happen? When them bullets start to come, when them swords start to come and them arrows start to come at you, where are you going to use to defend yourself? What are you going to use to defend yourself? So what you find is that many people have been filled with the Holy Ghost, but I'm here to surprise you and tell you the truth. Many have been filled with the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost ain't there anymore. And that is what is now puzzling many because they're trying to figure out well, how it is that a believer is possessed. Yes, a believer can be possessed because after a while, when we become waterless or dry spiritually, he ain't there anymore. He's gone. We should be casting out devils out of unsaved individuals, not believers. But unfortunately, this is the reality. Because the Holy Ghost did come and he did enter your body upon the baptism, which comes from Jesus. But what have you done after the baptism? The Holy Ghost came and what? You just shut up in tongues every time you go to church on a Sunday. You think that is how, that's not how we sustain him. That's not how we are expected to live with him. It's not a once a day, once a week rather kind of thing. It's a relationship. And if the Holy Ghost is in us and he's guiding us each day and we keep on rejecting him, we keep on pretending as though we're not hearing him, we're doing our own thing, he's gonna leave. Did you know that the Holy Ghost is a person? He has feelings. He can be offended. He can be quenched. Offended, Ephesians 4 verse 30. Then there are other scriptures that make us know that he is a person who has feelings. He ain't gonna remain. If we are continually walking in disobedience, he's going to leave. He's not going to take the gifts he gave you, but he himself is going to go. And so believe us, I'm here to tell you, you, we, 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 we need to become lovers of the word. Because when we do not get the word in our systems, we are becoming dry each day, drier and drier in the realm of the spirit. When devils look at us, we're not supposed to look dry. 
When devils see us, they're supposed to be afraid to even come into our homes. Are you hearing me? Let us get rid of the lukewarmness and begin to put, hallelujah, the bulk of the weight on the word. I think we have been stressing a lot of other things. What about the word? There's no service, true service in the sanctuary without the word. All them gimmicks and them antics and them joke is not what's going to transform people's lives. Those jokes cannot equip you to fight. And I'm here to tell you, if you're going to a sanctuary where there's just jokes and jokes and no word, you better leave. Run for your life. The word is necessary for your daily sustenance and survival as a spiritual being. If you have no word, it means you are waterless. And if we are waterless, it's the same as saying we are dry. And if we are dry, then we are the kind of people demons look for. We are the kind of people them devils are searching for every day. To come in and to make a home. Do you want that? No, you don't. Get into the word. Study the word as difficult as it is. And stop listening to people and get to know the word for yourself. I hear the Lord saying to remind his people, there are a lot of doctrines out there. The spirit, Shaya Koriato. The spirit of the Lord says to tell you, there are a lot of doctrines out there. And they sound good, but they're not his. There are a lot of doctrines, say the spirit of the Lord. There are doctrines of men. There are doctrines of demons. There are doctrines of Satan. Know the word for yourself. A lot of fancy talking with God included and the name of Jesus included are not his doctrines. They're not. They're not coming from him. Know the word for yourself. Get into it, people. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of the evening.